Okay, today we're going to dive into uh, the layouts in Photoshop. We're going to talk about how they affect your workflow and uh, just talk about a little bit of the differences. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now that we have a document open, what we want to do is just kind of discuss the interface as well as layouts in uh, Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing that you want to see is if you look, we can go up top to the menu bar and what you're going to see is that when you pick a tool, the toolbar across the top is going to show settings that are specific to that tool. Okay, so each one of these will give you a different specifications. We'll talk about that as we go through each tool. We don't need to go through those details at this point. Now, the top is going to have your uh, your toolbar menu. And then the actual on the left side is your toolbar with your actual tools. Um, here, this is going to be something that I want to talk about in detail. Depending on your layout, will determine what tools you will have available to you. So if you click and hold when you see a little uh, little uh, triangle on the bottom corner, that just tells you there's additional tools underneath. When it pops out, you'll see that it gives you those tools. It also gives you the keyboard shortcut for what it is that you're going to need to uh, access that. So it's just telling you if you hit L key and if you keep tapping Shift L, it'll cycle through those tools. So hold Shift, tap L, and it'll cycle through. So that's pretty much for any of these tools on the side. Now, let me show you a couple things so before we go further. Let's move over to the top right corner. And what we're going to see here is this is where we have our basic layouts. Okay, so right now we're in essentials. This is pretty much the layout you have. You'll notice from this line down, this shows us there are preset uh, layouts that Photoshop will give you, and they're designed to specifically be set up for the type of work that you're going to be doing. Okay, so essentials, this is your basic, bare bones uh, Photoshop stuff. If we go to 3D, the whole layout changes, the toolbar changes with the tools that you have access to will change. If you look on the right side over here, all of your menus change because now we're in the layout that's specific for 3D. If we cycle through, we have graphics and web design. You'll see the layouts change. We obviously now have uh, fonts because we're going to be dealing with more with typography. Uh, if we go here and shift to motion, now we're dealing with motion graphics. If you look on the bottom, we have a timeline. Okay. If we go to the next one, which I do use a lot painting, but I do modify it. But let's just talk about it. If we go to painting, you can see that the layout is different. It's set up more specific to painters, right? You have swatches up top, you go right beneath it, you have your brushes, and then right underneath you have layers, channels, and paths. I mean, it's pretty fantastic, real easy to use, okay? We go over here to the left, we have all these toolbars, but here's something that I do wanna point out. There are certain tools, if you are gonna use this painting layout, that are not available to you. So if I click and hit on this eyedropper, typically with most of the layouts, you would see a ruler tool in here. Um, and there's a lot of other tools that you're gonna see are just not available to you because this is not set up for doing a lot of photo editing. This is specifically for painting. So how do you access those tools? Well, if you come down here and click on this three dots, you can see there are the additional tools that are sitting right here for you. You can also go into edit toolbar and start to make adjustments as well. Okay. But for now, let's just stick to this so we can stay focused and get through this and make sure we're really clear. Okay. So now these are the additional tools that you have access to. Now down here, we have our colors. This is pretty much going to be the same throughout all the layouts. Okay. 
Now, we have quick selections and we'll talk about that specifically later on. This is something that's there that I wanna talk about, change screen mode. If you click on this, you'll see we have three different modes for how our uh, canvas or our, our document spaces window will preview, okay? And I'm just gonna to toggle through these so you can see. Let's hit uh, full screen mode. So there we go. Now, here's the other thing that I want you to see. If you just tap the letter F on your keyboard, it cycles through each one of those screen modes, okay? How it fills. Now, the first, it will allow you to see the menu bars up top. Okay, it's pretty much standard. If you hit the second, what it's doing, it's doing a full screen mode where if you look at the bottom of the canvas, you can't accidentally click outside of Photoshop. Okay, so you have a full screen mode, but you will also have the menu bars up top. If you hit F one more time, you will not have the menu bars. If I hit tab, I can still get my tools available the tab key, okay? But you have three different modes in how you would be able to access or how you can preview your document. And let me show you one last thing once we're in this mode. Now, if you notice, the back area is black on the side of the document. If I put my cursor, and it doesn't matter what tool you have, but if I hit Control or right click if you're on PC, you notice that I could come in here and change the color of that background. This is important. Now, let me explain why. If you're really trying to be very specific and, and see color in an accurate way, it's actually best to have a middle value gray, not black. But if you want to have contrast, and you just want to be able to see the image and have it pop from the background, black looks really dynamic. It makes it very easy to see, but it will throw value and color. Now, to be honest with you, I don't always use gray. Sometimes I use black, but it depends on the project that I'm working on, okay? So let's go through one more. We have one more over here to look at. We have photography. With photography, what we have is a layout that's very specific for editing photos. Uh, first thing you will see up top is there's a histogram on the top right corner. The reason why we have the histogram is because it allows people to take a photo and to be able to edit the value or the brightness of the image. And that's what that's for. We'll talk about that more in depth later on. Um, but these are all of the, the layouts that you have essentially. If you want you can use essentials to start with if you look under essentials we have this libraries here it allows us to store different brushes and graphics inside of this libraries if you log in to your uh, your account with uh, Adobe anything that you save inside of here will allow you to access this on whatever computer you're on, long as you dial in to your account settings, right? And usually you'll see it up top up here, okay? So that's what the libraries is. But let's get over here to see this color palette. If you wanna have this color palette available to you at all times when you're working, if I go back to painting, you'll notice that it's not there. So what you would have to do is go to window and then go down to color and then it becomes available to you. And then you can leave it here and you can also come through and change the different settings. But we'll get into those details as we go further on in this course. Okay, we have another one in the book. So in the meantime, uh, I just want you to keep painting uh, and also make sure you check out my website. Uh, it's digitalpaintingtips.com and also you will wanna hit that subscribe button below as well as ring that bell so you're up to date with any and everything we got going on here. So peace out.